Over 300,000 people have come to Farnborough to see some of the world's finest aircraft. This year, the fighters are particularly interesting because this is the first time the public will see and hear supersonic flying. The Hawker Hunter single-seater interceptor is starting up. The Hunter, on super priority order for the Royal Air Force, has a single Rolls-Royce Avon engine. It has great beauty of line and exceptional speed and rate of climb. That was Neville Duke in the Hunter flying through the sound barrier. He's now coming over at more than 700 miles an hour. And here comes the Swift. The Vickers Supermarine Swift is also on super priority order for the RAF. It has double the speed of its famous predecessor, the Spitfire, and yet keeps the same fine handling qualities. The Vickers Valiant, with four Avon engines, is also super priority. It is the first of a new generation of jet bombers. It's exceptionally maneuverable and can operate at very great heights. It's the finest aircraft of its type in production anywhere in the world.
Fairy Gannet is in super priority production as the standard naval anti-submarine aircraft. The very complete radar equipment is carried. The sum in a retractable cupola under the fuselage. Half of the Armstrong Sidley double member turboprop can be shot down for cruising economy. The work of the ground crews is often overlooked. They put in long hours keeping the aircraft serviceable, a job of increasing complexity as more and more specialized equipment is introduced. This is the Vickers Supermarine 508 with two Avon engines, a prototype naval fighter of tremendous power and most unusual appearance. It's the only fighter with a butterfly tail which helps to give it the very wide speed range needed for naval operations. It has folding wings for stowage on aircraft carriers. The short SA-4 jet bomber, of which two have been built, has its four engines in pairs, one above the other. It will have an important part to play in high altitude research and the development of new equipment. Here is the de Havilland 110, swept wing night and all weather fighter. It was the first British aircraft regularly to have exceeded the speed of sound. In it, John Derry obtained much data on transonic flight before he tragically lost his life flying a similar aircraft at this year's display. Powered by two Rolls-Royce Avon engines, the 110 has a performance comparable to the fastest single-seaters. Yet it carries a very heavy armament and complete radar equipment for all weather flying. To exceed the speed of sound, the aircraft usually starts to dive at about 40,000 feet, 8 miles, and passes the speed of sound at about 30,000 feet.
Another all-weather day and night fighter is the Gloucester Javelin. It's the first twin-engine Delta Wing aircraft to go into production. It's a large aircraft with a span of 52 feet. Its two Armstrong Sidley Sapphire engines of at least 7,800 pounds thrust apiece allow it to fly above the speed of sound. At the same time, the Delta Wing gives exceptional slow flying characteristics and a very quick takeoff. The Avro 707B is a Delta Wing aircraft designed for research in low-speed flying. A research which it is only now known was directed to the production of the world's first Delta Wing bomber. In contrast, the Avro 707A, with a wingspan of 34 feet, was designed for high-speed research. The 707A is a flying scale model of the bomber. Here it comes, the world's first four-jet Delta bomber, the Avro 698. The 698 shows how slowly it can fly with dive brakes out.
the Avro 698, with its four Rolls-Royce Avon engines, is the most advanced bomber flying in the world today, and perhaps the most beautiful. It is being flown by Roly Falk, who is entirely alone in the aircraft. The 698 is a spectacular triumph for Britain's aviation industry today, but has an even greater promise for the future. The Delta Wing has many great advantages for large, long-range passenger aircraft and offers possibilities of speed which may well be realized in the next few years. 